This is DWBR of the Philippine Broadcasting Service. 104.3 on FM. Music and talk. Nice and easy. The time is 12 o'clock. Good afternoon. Here is the 12 o'clock edition of the Network News. Philippine officials are considering removing concrete blocks allegedly installed by China on a disputed shoal in the South China Sea. Vice Admiral Jose Luis Salano, Navy Chief, said no further activity had been detected at the Scarborough Shoal since the Defense Department accused China last week of laying 75 concrete blocks on an underwater section of the outcrop. The territory is claimed by both Manila and Beijing. Alano said discussions were underway about how to address the issue, but the final decision on whether or not to remove the blocks rests with the Philippine government and not the military. Filipino officials have warned that the block laying could be a pre prelude to China building structures on the show. A Chinese Foreign Affairs Ministry spokesman denied that Beijing had laid concrete blocks on the outcrop while asserting it was part of China's territory. The Aquino administration is more determined to pursue peace in Mindanao. The Government Peace Panel and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front Peace Panel are in Kuala Lumpur to discuss the last remaining or the last two remaining annexes, power sharing and normalization. Marie Ruiz reports. Government Peace Panel Chair Miriam Coronel Ferrer said the government must not allow the peace process to fail. She said by succeeding, government can focus on issues, not on personalities, on collective grievances, and not personal vendettas. She said aborting the peace talks with the MILF will not stop the violent acts of the other rebel groups in Mindanao. Ferrer said President Aquino has instructed the panel to come up with annexes that will pass the scrutiny of Congress. She also said the president pointed out the need to have a legal framework that will provide for accountability and check and balance that will govern future leaders. Marie Peña Ruiz for PBS News. Peace negotiators from both the Philippine government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF, have condemned the violence in Zamboanga City. In a joint statement, the two panels said that those responsible for the violence must be stopped and held accountable for their acts. They said those behind the continued acts of violence in Mindanao do not want the current peace process between the government and the MILF to succeed. They added that the Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF's actions intend to derail the peace process by using violence and disinformation to spread fear and chaos in Mindanao. Both panels reiterate to their commitment to the peace process and pursuing the peace effort to its just and rightful conclusion. Both panels also extended their sympathies and solidarity with the people of Zamboanga City and other areas affected by the fighting. Senate President Franklin Drilon has appealed to the media to cooperate with the government and not give a blow-by-blow -blow account of what is happening in Zamboanga City. Brilon said the media must refrain from revealing the position or strategy of the armed forces of the Philippines or the Philippine National Police. Jojo Ismail reports. Brilon said the Lunita incident is still fresh in our minds and the issue raised was the overcoverage of the media, which included a blow-by-blow -blow account of what was happening and this affected the ability of the police authorities to handle the situation and in fact resulted in the unfortunate death of a number of Hong Kong residents. Because of this, the Senate President appealed to media with some degree of cooperation without in any way affecting the exercise of the right to inform our people, but maybe make sure that such coverage will not resist the higher interest of resolving the problem. The authorities must act firmly on this Sambuanga episode because we recall that in 2001 this also happened when the Kabatangan Sambuanga City incident where the same MNL group had hosted a number of Sambuanga City residents and government was fixed to be weak in dealing with that drilling stress. For PBS News, George Ismael, Senate. 
The Zamboanga Provincial Crisis Management Committee, or CMC, is finding ways and means to assist Basilan-bound passengers who are currently stranded in Zamboanga City due to the ongoing crisis to be ferried back to Basilan at the soonest possible time. Towards this end, the Basilan Crisis Management Committee is drawing up a master list of stranded Basilan-bound passengers currently in Zamboanga City. The Provincial Administrator's Office said that hopefully they will be able to send their first sizable batch of stranded Basilan-bound passengers back home within the day. But, he said this would depend on the availability and capacity of the vessels to be used. The Zamboanga City Western Mindanao Command authorities are very strict with this, so those who are not on the list will not be allowed to board any special sea craft commissioned to bring them back to Basilan. The Metropolitan Manila Muslim Community for Justice and Peace will make an attempt today to talk to Moro National Liberation Front Chairman Nur Miswari for the purpose of putting an end to the Zamboanga City crisis. Alvin Baltazar reports. Metro Manila Muslim Community for Justice and Peace Chairman Dato Basher Alonto said that they will fly today to Zamboanga City along with other Muslim leaders who are hoping to meet with the MNLF Chairman. Alonto is optimistic that as a former colleague of the MNLF leader, Miswari would give them a chance to personally see them and discuss matters that may pave the way in resolving the standoff in Zamboanga City. Meanwhile, Alonto's group is closely performing a tight watch on about 146 Muslim groups here in Metro Manila amid possibility that sympathy attack may be staged here at the National Capital Region by Miswari's followers. Alvin Baltasar for PBS News. As the crisis involving a standoff between government forces and the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF gunmen, entered its third day, the Zamboanga City government appealed anew to its residents not to engage in panic buying. Mayor Isabel Salazar made the appeal after a security briefing with concerned military and police officials. Salazar said the city government urges business establishments selling basic necessities to open their establishments except those in affected areas. She added that the buying public is also advised not to resort to panic buying, but purchase provisions enough for the day to prevent shortage of supplies. Salazar declared that only government agencies offering frontline services will continue operations today, but schools, public or private, will remain closed. Almost 3,000 personnel of the National Capital Region Police Office are being utilized in today's EDSA Tayo prayer vigil at the EDSA Shrine. Again, Alvin Baltazar reports. NCRPO Director Chief Superintendent Marcelo Garbo said that the mentioned number of police personnel will serve as augmentation force from the National Support Units. Police personnel will be manning not only the traffic situation, but they too will be looking at the aspect of crowd control, secure public safety, places of convergence, and vital installations, as they will also go against criminal activities and terrorism. Garbo likewise has ordered all his district directors to strengthen their intelligence and counterintelligence operations, intensify checkpoint operations, specifically all M3 and exit points of the SS Shrine and Metro Manila. Alvin Baltasar for PBS News. Schools near the EDSA Shrine have suspended classes for today. La Salle Green Hills and Poveda School suspended classes for the day due to the prayer vigil. However, third-year high school students at La Salle Green Hills will still have to come to school for their exams. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police, or PNP, and the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, personnel positioned themselves early around the EDSA Shrine. As early as 5 a.m., traffic along the northbound part of EDSA near corner Ortigas Avenue had slowed down partly because of media vehicles and vans setting up to cover the vigil. The PNP said the National Capital Region Police Office is on full alert for the vigil. 
The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, has advised motorists to take alternate routes in the EDSA Shrine during the anti-PDAF rally today. MMDA Chairman Francis Tolentino said heavy traffic is expected in the area. More from Alvin Baltazar. Tolentino said the traffic uh, rerouting plan will be implemented from 6 a.m. until 4 p.m. The MMDA chief said that a traffic scheme called Zipper Lane or Reversible Lane will be used and will cover 2.86 kilometers roads and portions of Petsa in Ortigas, but would only be open for private vehicles. He said that allowing the counterflowing of vehicles can help ease the heavy traffic along the affected areas and it will, impl- or will be implemented at uh, 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. today. According to Tolentino, the zipper lane occupying one inner lane of southbound from Megamall to Edsa, Grame, left turn from Edsa to Rosario Yuso Boulevard, while the other zipper lane from Ortigas Meralco to Edsa Cubao, and uh, as motorists will uh, should take the left turning flyover and merge at the zipper lane of Edsa from Megamall to Santolan. Tolentino added that for public utility buses, alternate route can also can use also by the private vehicles. I'll be able to serve for PBS News. The Mendiola Bridge near Malacanang was secured with barbed wire and steel railings early today, the 12th anniversary of the 911 attacks on the United States. The police also said they are not discounting the possibility that groups taking part in an anti-pork vigil at Edsa Shrine may march to Mendiola. The Manila Police District also deployed anti-riot police personnel to the United States Embassy in anticipation of possible rallies by militants. Manila Police District Chief Isagani Henabe said he will not take chances even if there is no intelligence information about a terrorist threat today. He said sufficient personnel have been deployed in the two areas. Senator Aquilino Pimentel today said only a new agreement between China and Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN member countries that includes the Philippines could create an atmosphere of peace and tranquility in the disputed waters of the West Philippine Sea. More from Jojo Ismail. Pimentel said that he is fully supporting the position of Foreign Affairs Secretary Alberto Rosario for the ASEAN to speed up the negotiations with the Chinese government to conclude the proposed code of conduct that would be binding for the fishbowl and orderly maritime protocol in one of the world's most vital waterways. He said that China will not gain from its bullying tactics but will stand to earn great respect and admiration from its neighbors in the world by helping resolve the conflict to bring order and ease tensions in the area. Pimentel said that the latest Chinese incursion to ostensibly expand its territory is a clear and present threat to peace in the region, which both countries and the ASEAN must avoid to prevent the escalation of armed confrontation in a critical international shipping route believed to contain rich reservoir of mineral, gas, and oil. For PBS News, George Ismail, Senate. Military helicopters continued their flights yesterday night or last night and early today over Zamboanga City. Aside from the helicopters, state security forces continued patrols on the ground beefed up by armored personnel carriers. Yesterday, an early morning exchange of fire between government and Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF forces had marred parts of Zamboanga City. The crisis virtually shut down the city as work in frontline services were suspended. Mayor Isabel Salazar asked businesses in areas not affected by the crisis to open and appealed to residents not to engage in panic buying. A group of militants showed up early today at the Edsa Shrine for a prayer vigil against the pork barrel system, but was turned away by the police for carrying streamers. Some 15 members of the San Lacas group tried to get near the Edsa Shrine, but were stopped by the police. The Eastern Police District reminded the militants of the agreement not to bring streamers, placards, and political items to the shrine, which is a no-rally zone. 
Wednesday's activity at the Edsa Shrine scheduled from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. is meant to be a prayer vigil against the pork barrel system. And with that, we conclude the 12 o'clock edition of the Network News. This is Bon Vivar reporting. This is Business Radio. The time is 12.15.